Hello everyone, Alex here. Today we're going to continue with our sprinter hydraulics using Revit series. I remind you that the Viking Hydraulic Assistant is a piece of software developed by Viking that can be integrated with Revit so that you can assign hydraulic nodes to your model and then you can extract the data directly from your model so that you can perform hydraulic calculations in compliance with NAPA 13 or factory mutual requirements. In the previous video, Sprinter Hydraulics Part 1, I give you an introduction to the Viking Hydraulic software. I show you how to download and install the software. We started exploring the Component Manager, and we did a couple of examples introducing data for baffler preventers. Now in this video, Part 2, I'm going to dive in a little bit more into the Component Manager. We're going to define a couple of fire pumps. One of them is going to be an NFPA fire pump, and the other one's going to be from a manufacturer. And then we'll look into some miscellaneous. Then we're going to dive into the actual hydraulic assistant where we're going to define our water supply from the city and we're going to define the sprinkler most remote area. I remind you that this series is based on an APA 13 requirement. Let's get to it. Hi everyone, this is Alex with BIM It Up where we help you with professional training and coaching in mechanical, electrical, plumbing, fire protection systems and Autodesk platforms like Revit and AutoCAD MEP. Let's get started. Now let's do, for example, a pump. Right, so we come here to pumps, and then you have NFPA. These are three NFPA curves. So let's add, for example, a small pump here at component. Let's say this is a 500 GPM, but it's at 50 PSI. Go OK. And now we can add our pump information. So in this case, since this is going to be an NFPA pump curve, what I'm going to do is just the rated pressure is going to be 50. PSI, the rated flow is going to be 500 GPM. And then I'm going to keep the churn at 110% of the rated. I'm going to say calculate curve. So I click yes, and here's my curve. See, so at 500, I have 50 PSI. Then at zero, I have 110% for my churn, right? So it's 55 PSI. And then it added another point at 150% of my flow which is, I believe, 65% of the rated pressure. So that's our NFPA pump. Perfect. So let's say we want, instead of an NFPA pump, let's say we want an Aurora pump. So I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to add a category member. I'm going to call it Aurora. You know, you could have another one for Peerless, Patterson, etc. And then under Aurora, I'm going to add a component. And my component is going to be the 6-481 dash 11 which is going to be a thousand gpm at 40 psi hit ok now in this case instead of being an nfpa calculating pump curve i'm going to introduce real points based on the performance curve that i got from the manufacturer so at point so you always want to have your churn in this case it's going to be 50 then maybe we can have like 500 GPM, half of the rated flow. And let's say that's 48 PSI. Now the rated flow for sure. So at 1,000, we have 40. And then 150% of our flow, we have 30 PSI. And then you can get as granular as you want. You know, you can add a point every 100 GPM if you wanted to. But for most cases, two or three points will be more than enough. So we're done with our pumps. We can close this. Let's take a quick look at fittings here. So fittings, you have the NFPA 13 typical values. You also have FM3-0 in case you're doing factory mutual projects. But in most cases, you would have like NFPA 13. So here you have your elbow. And then here's your list of equivalent length for pressure dropping feet. So you have elbow, T's, 45 degree elbow. And for each one of them, you have this table. Same thing for the FM. You have some flex heads here from Anvil. And this is all input by Viking, so you cannot change any of this. But if you want to add another one, you just follow the same procedure we just saw. As far as flex pipe, you have the super flex here, four half inch, three quarter inch, etc. You have some foam information. For piping, you have ductile iron, mostly for your mains, online and cement line. So you can see the different C values here, 100, 140. For your pressure drop, you have some plastic pipe here, blaze master, etc. 
And then for steel, you have your Schedule 40, Schedule 10. This is what I use most of the time. Then you have galvanized, Schedule 40 and 10 as well. And you have for dry. Notice that for dry, this is here so you can use the different C value. And then you can add other piping. You can duplicate. See, like you can duplicate component and then just change that pipe data. So you have all your pipe stuff here. Where we saw pumps. And then as far as valves, you have deluge, dry, flow control. Here under wet, you have like the easy riser for your flow control assembly, alarm valves, swing check. And again, you can add different members here, different components. So you can associate by manufacturer. But these guys are great. You know, they provide a ton of stuff here for us. And again, all this has your equivalent length data here, which is zero for the size that you don't have. But then for the size that you have, you do have the value, right? So for two and a half, you have six. For three inch, you have 10, etc. And then notice that for each one of these, they already associated Revit families here. You see? So all these guys, you have all your Revit families. So the work's already done for you. But like in the pumps, Right, I'm, I'm going to go to the NFPA pump, so there's nothing here, right? And then for my Aurora pump, I haven't associated anything to it yet. And now let's jump into the actual hydraulic assistant. Now, if you're liking the video, I don't know, I guess you could show your appreciation. I'm not sure what to do. What to do? What... I guess we'll never know, right? All right, so like I mentioned before, the Viking hydraulic assistant is available as a desktop application standalone but we're not going to be using that for this exercise we're going to be using the revit plugin so let's go ahead and fire up revit i'm going to open up a 2020 version and then you'll find the hydraulic assistant right here right that's home information and i also have the viking plugin that has all their components and all their families and all that but this is what we're going to be focusing on so let's go to home and this opens up the hydraulic assistant. And now we're going to start a new project. So you go here, start new project, and you give a project name. So let's say AJS Viking Hydraulic Test. Then you give it a location, Miami, Florida. Then drawing number, let's say 001. Give it a date, let's say 1231-2023, New Year's Eve. I'm gonna keep the calculation type as demand. And for calculation methods, you have two options. You can do Darcy Wageback or Hayes and Williams. I'm gonna keep all these defaults. Uh, I want the calculations from Sprinter to source. So it's gonna come all the way from the most remote area back to our source. Default iterations is 500, that's fine. Enable calculations. As far as fittings, I'm gonna keep an FPA 13. You have other options, including factory mutual 3.0. I'm gonna keep an FPA 13. And now let's set our water supply. So we come here, set supply, and now you either select an element if you already have one, or you can insert one if you don't have one. So let's insert a supply. I'm gonna place it right here. You see how my pipe highlights? And then for the supply name, I'm gonna call this city. My node is source, that's fine. For the hose allowance, I'm gonna have 250 GPM for ordinary hazard. And I'm gonna assume a very crappy supply, let's say 30 PSI static, 20 PSI residual, let's say at a thousand GPM. And before anything else, let's make sure our piping has continuity. So for that, we have a couple of options. One option is to tap select. And then if you do that, a couple of times, you should be able to select all the way up to your most remote sprinkler. So that's fine. That's a good indication that our system is continuous. I'm gonna hit escape. Another option that Viking provides is you can come here to reachable pipes and then you can color your reachable pipes, either blue or you can change the color if you want. Let's, let's use green, for example, and then color reachable pipes. And then you can see that everything got color green. So that's good. Let's just remove all colors for now. And now we need to specify a design area. So all this piping is on level three. So let's go to our project browser and let's go to level three Viking. This is a view I have prepared already. And then here, we're gonna specify our design area. So I click here in design area and I'm gonna give it a name. This is gonna be design area one. The density, since this is ordinary hazard group one, is gonna be 0 0.15 GPM per square foot. Maximum area per head is gonna be 120 square feet. The minimum pressure is gonna be seven PSI per NPA 13. And then this minimum flow here is gonna be calculated either based on the seven PSI minimum per NPA 13 or based on the density times the area per head 
So whatever is largest, that's what Viking is going to use here. And now you can either pick an existing field region. If you already have a field region, you can select the sprinklers individually, or you can simply draw an area. I think that's what I'm going to do. Draw area. I'm going to make it a rectangular area, just like in the NFPA 13 example. I'm going to grab 12 sprinklers from this corner, let's say all the way up to here. And I'm going to click OK. We can see that our area is about 1,500 square feet. So that's good. We're just a little bit above that. And when you do this, make sure that you create the fill region in the same level where the sprinklers are located. If not, it's going to give you an error. So now we can see all our sprinklers. We can see that we grabbed 12 sprinklers as expected. We can see our K factor, density, area, minimum pressure, and minimum flow. And currently, we have nothing on real flow or real pressure because we haven't run the calculations yet. So for now, let's say done. And you can see that this is just a field region. See? Field region with our area. 